everyone. Today we are continuing the Summer of Genesis Bible study. We are today we are going over we will be reading and discussing chapters 20, 21 and 22. And um, feel free to put down in comments or live chat what what translation you pref you use, or if there's translation you'd rather me use, or just advice. Um, or if you have questions, feel free to do that. Or if you just want to talk in live chat, feel free to do that also. Um, I'm premiering the video, so it's not going to be like I'm preoccupied recording and doing the Bible study and won't be able to talk. It's a premiere, so it's the video playing, but, um, where there's a live chat and I wanted, and I do the premiering stuff so that while we're doing the video, um, I can more easily have a conversation with with you guys. Um, kind of as I fellowship time, I'm also probably going to leave a link to the Discord server in this video so you can join the Discord if you want to. Um, and I'm going to start reading now. Um, and Abraham journeyed from there to the south and dwelt between Kadesh and Shur and stayed in Gerar. Ger now Abraham said to Sarah his wife, She is my sister and a blameless king of Ger sent and took Sarah, but God came to Abimelech in a dream by night and said to him, Indeed, you are a dead man because of the from whom you have taken, for she is a man's wife. But Abimelech had not come near her. And he said, Lord, will you slay a righteous nation also? He's... He did not say to me, she is my sister, and she even, she herself said, he is my brother, in the integrity of my heart and in the sense of my hands I have done this. And God said to him in a dream, Yes, I know that you did this in the integrity of your heart, for I also withheld you from sinning against me. Therefore I did not let you touch her. Now therefore restore the man's wife, for he is a prophet and he will be Pray for you, and you shall live. But if you do not restore her, know that you shall surely die, you and all who are yours. So Abimelech rose early in the morning, called all his servants, and told all these things, and hearing, and the... And the men were very much afraid, and Abimelech called Abraham and said to him, What have you done to us? How have I offended you that you have brought on to me and on my kingdom a great sin? You have done deeds to me that ought not to be done. Then Abimelech said to Abraham, What did you have in view that you have done this thing? 
And Abraham said, because I thought surely the fear of God is not in this place. And they will kill me on account of my wife. But indeed, she is truly my sister. She is the daughter of my father, but not the daughter of my mother. And she became my wife. And it came to pass when God caused me to wander from my father's house. And I said to her, this is your ki kindness that you should do for me in every place, wherever we go. Say of me, he is my brother. Then Abimelech took sheep and oxen and male and female servants and gave them to Abraham, and he restored Sarah, his wife, to him. And Abimelech said, See, my land is before you. Dwell where it pleases you. Then to Sarah he said, Behold, I have given your brother a thousand piece silver. Indeed, this vindicates you before all who are with you and before everyone. Thus she was rebuked. So, so Abraham prayed to God, and God healed Abimelech, his wife, his female servants. Then they bore children, for the Lord has closed up all the wombs of the house of Abimelech because Sarah, because of Sarah, and Abram's wife. Um, like that last part, it, it goes along with what, what was said earlier about how God, um, how God prevented a bleem like from sinning and committing adultery. I, it made it so they physically could not have sex. Well, like they were incapable of having sex during during the time they were there, and like we see kind of like negative implications of not whole truths being shared through um Abraham. And Sarah not mentioning that that though it is true that they are siblings, they they didn't mention the whole truth in saying that they are also married and to each other. And we see that ex and God, like this time and other times, multiple times in the future, like we see it with with um people like Joshua and Daniel later, how God uses both dreams themselves and dream interpreters to do good things for God's people and do things that protect the lives of of his people. Like we see that with Daniel in in his time with um Nebuchadnezzar. I mean uh, Dar King Darius. I think it might have been King Darius. And then um And we see it with with Joseph. Um, well, both Joseph New Testament the 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 stepfather of well, the earthly father of. I don't know if you'd call Joseph the stepfather, Jesus. Um, but 
put down in the comments what you thought would be best term to use because I'd like to know. And if you guys know, that would be awesome. Appreciate it. And we and like well like Joseph was told to escape from take Mary and Jesus to Egypt when King Herod was trying to was trying to kill Jesus by killing all the children under the age of two. I think. All the boys under the age of two, I think. And and we see that with Joseph from the Old Testament, um, where he um where um God used Joseph to interpret the dreams the Pharaoh was having that let him know about the the upcoming years of famine. So that they were able to prepare for it in the in the time they had of surplus. So um So, like, God used those dreams to protect and and warn people of things. And God used his dream where he spoke to Blimelech of warning him of the... warning him about the, the fact that... Um, and Abraham were not just siblings but a husband and wife for the sake of preventing him from sin and we also see how he prevented him from sin by by um like we saw that he People were protected from having, like, that temptation of having sex was taken away from people through the inability of people, like, people's inability to have sex during that time, like, closing up the wounds. We, we see that occur a couple times, and, um, a few generations later with, um, with Jacob and um, and his his wives, yeah. um, but that that's a few chapters away. We'll we'll get there, but I'm getting off topic and jumping around. But that was really fun. Um, I, I enjoyed talking about this chapter and, and it's just really cool like um talking about how like God will I uh, in our lives we are exposed to temptations but like just seeing how like like God God's intervention in ways so that we aren't tempted in certain ways. Just thinking that's a really cool thing to praise God for and stuff. So it's like not just that God forgives us for sins. He, he also, even though we don't always know it or acknowledge it enough to to be grateful for it, um, or at least we're, we might not always be grateful for it at the time he does it until we understand why he did a thing. It's just really cool to see that, like, 
I God, God watches over us not from not just from protecting us from harm in cases but also from spiritual destructive behaviors. And uh, it's really cool. Um, we're, okay, so we're on We're on chapter 21, yeah, 21. I'm going to start reading now. And the Lord visited Sarah as he had said, and for Sarah conceived and bore Abraham a son in his old age and set time of which God had spoken to him. And Abraham called the name of his son who was born to him, whom Sarah bore, with, bore to him Isaac. Abraham circumcised his son Isaac when he was eight days old, as God had commanded him. Now Abraham was 100 years old when he was, when his son Isaac was born to him. And Sarah said, God has made me laugh, and all who hear with me and and all who here will laugh with me she also said who would have said to abraham that sarah would nurse children for i have borne him a son in his old age hagar and ishmael oh okay that's the part that's the name of the part. Okay. In in my Bible, it divides a section in like there's a bold black phrase that kind of divides it up into topics. Um, we're on verse eight now. So the child grew and was weaned. And Abraham made a great feast on the same day that Isaac was weaned. And Sarah saw the son of Hagar, the Egyptian whom she had born to Abraham, scoffing. There, therefore she said to Abraham, cast out this, this bondwoman and her son, for the son of the bondwoman... Shall not be with her. With shall not be hair with my son, namely with Isaac. And the matter was very displeasing in Abraham's sight because of his son. But God said to Abraham, But God said to Abraham, Do not let it. We're on verse 12. But God said to Abraham, Do not let it be displeasing in your sight because of the lad or because your bondwoman, whatever Sarah has said to you, listen to her voice. 
For Isaac, your seed shall be called. Yet I will also make a nation of the son of the bondwoman, because she, because he is your seed. So Abraham rose early in the morning and took bread and a skin of water, and putting it on her shoulder, he gave it to the boy of Hagar. And sent her away. Then, then she departed and wandered in the wilderness of Beersheba. Beersheba? I'm going to assume that's what it is. And the water, and the water in the skin was used up, and she placed the boy under one of the shrubs. Then she went and sat down across from him at a distance of about a bowl, sh a bow shot. <clears throat> For she said to herself, let me not see the death of the, of the boy. So she sat opposite of him and lifted her voice and wept. And God heard the voice of the lad. Then the angel of God called to Hagar out of heaven and said to her, What ails you, Hagar, before fear not? Fear not, for God has heard the voice of the lad where he, where he is. Arise, lift up the lad, and and hold him with your hand, for I will make him a great nation. Then God opened her eyes, and and she saw a well of water. And she went and filled the skin of. Filled the skin with water and gave the lad a drink. So God was with the lad and he grew and dwelt in the wilderness and became an archer. He dwelt in the wilderness of Paran and his mother took a wife for him. From the land of Egypt. And it came to pass at the time that Abimelech and pick Teholo, the commander of his army, spoke to Abraham, saying, God is with you in all that you do. Now therefore swear to me by God that you will not deal falsely with me, with my offer with my offspring, or with the with my posterity posterity. But that according to the kindness that I have done to you, you will do to me and to the land in which you have dwelt. And Abraham said, I will swear. Then Abraham rebuked a blame like because of a well of water which Abraham, a blame like servants had seized. And Abimelech said, I do not know who has done this thing. You did not tell me, nor had I heard of it until today. So Abraham took sheep and oxen and gave to them to Abimelech, and the two of them made a covenant. And Abraham set seven new lambs, the flock, of the flock by themselves. Then Abimelech asked Abraham, What is the meaning of these things 
of these seven ewe lambs which you have set by themselves. And he said, you will take these seven ewe lambs from my hand and that they may be by my witness that I have dug this well. Therefore he therefore he called the place Beersheba because the two of them swore an oath there. Thus they made a covenant at Beersheba. So Abimelech rose with Piccolo Patrol, the commander of his army, and they returned to the land of the Philistines. Then Abraham planted a a, tama, a tamarisk tree in Beersheba, and they called on the name of the Lord, the everlasting God. And Abraham stayed in the land of the Philistines many days. Um. In this chapter, we saw the um the the beginning of the fulfillment of God's promise. Well, God's the fulfillment of one of the covenants that God had made with Abraham. Well, the initial part of the covenant that was made which was the birth of of Abraham and Isaac's son I mean Abraham and Sarah's son Isaac um and from from Isaac he would he would later, well, we're going to talk about Isaac and his children. But the Jacob that was talked about um, earlier on in the video, he, um, Jacob is the second youngest, is the second son of, of Isaac and his wife. And and his significance will be talked about in greater detail um, when we get to it, because there's a there's a lot to talk about with him. And we still have one more chapter to go today. Um. So. I'm, we're on chapter, tw and the place that, um, and we see through a box, the, the covenant at the end that was made, like, we see God, um, continue to provide for, for Hagar and Ishmael, um, and we thought, and it specifically talked about how um, God God provided for Hagar and Ishmael because Ishmael was the descendant of he wasn't part of the covenant that was made the initial covenant that was made but God did make a covenant involving Ishmael um, after he was when Hagar became pregnant, and um, and because Ishmael came from came from Abraham, God provided for Hagar and Ishmael through the well, and we see how how God used a covenant. Covenant is pretty much means like a very strong promise like very serious promise um 
In this case, it was made between Abimelech and um, and Abraham that was for the sake of protecting and preserving the well that God had used to had used to provide for Abimelech and Ishmael. I mean, not for Hagar and Ishmael. Um, Ishmael is the name of the ch- of Hagar and Abraham's child. Um, okay. Um, and it talked about Abraham in the in the last verse. It talked about Abraham staying in the land of the Philistines for many days. Um, Main main stories involving the Philistines were um, the story of David and Goliath. Um, Goliath was was fighting on the side of the Philistines, and um, and David would have many other interactions with the Philistines as well as the Israelites. Um, I believe it. Um so um not not um not New Testament Saul more well known as Paul but um but Old Testament Saul um who was the first king of Israel I believe him and and all of his sons except I think except Ishbosheth were killed in that in that war, I think, in a not not that same war as the David and Goliath stuff, but um, the Philistines would war with them again, and um, and they would, and that that other. There was a time when they went to war and they and the the Philistines won in the battle by and that led by led to the deaths of 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 Saul and I believe all of his sons except Ishbosheth. I don't I think so. I think. And then um let, let me know if I'm wrong though. Um and also in the book of Judges, this is prior to the king the first king of Israel and his reign. Um but um another popular Sorry, in the Old Testament of involving the Philistines is the story of Samson. Um, like Delilah came from the Philistines and there was part of this where um, Delilah would try to deceive him and so that the Philistines could kill him. Um, and there were a couple times where they were tricked, and and there was part where um, he had Samson killed five hundred of them with an ox's jawbone type thing, um, which I kind of feel like that would be kind of funny story to see it realized because. Oh, like Simpson been like, hey, don't get up all your job on for a quick sec. Um, but I'm I'm getting off topic again. Um, okay, so we have one more chapter left, and we are.
we're on chapter 22 now. I'm going to start reading, and then after we're done reading the chapter, I will discuss chapter 22. And then that will be the end of our video for today. Well, after discussing, after reading and discussing the chapter, I will close it out and that will be the end of the video for today. Um, there might be fewer chapters on the next one because, um, because Genesis chapter four is it's sixty seven verses. So I'm not quite sure how far we'll go. So either by the end of this week we'll be we'll either be halfway through or one chapter away from being halfway through it. Because there are I believe there are 50 chapters in Genesis. Yeah, there's 50 chapters in Genesis. So either we'll be halfway through. Or we will be one verse away from one chapter away from being halfway through. It might just be a long video next week. Well, really long video after this one. Not quite sure though. Um, let me know what you prefer, John. Um, because I'd like to know what you guys, what would be best for you guys. As far as studying the scripture, um, let me know in live chat or the comments. If you'd rather me do 23, 24, and 25 all together, or just 23 and 24. Because um, 23 is a really short chapter. Well, sh short in comparison to 24 and 25. But I'm probably just going to do this last chapter today and go through 22, read 22, and discuss 22. And call that the end for this video because it's, it's 39 minutes right now. So by the time we get done talking about this and ending the video, it will be pretty late and 
and also it's 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 forty minutes right now on on the time thing. So I'm gonna go ahead and start reading this section and and we'll end the video. Like we'll read this chapter and discuss it. Then the vid then we will end the video. Um now it came to pass after these these things that God tested Abraham and said to him, Abraham, and he said, Here I am. Then he said, Take now your son, your only son, Isaac, whom you love, and go to the land of Moriah and offer him there as a burnt offering on one of the mountains of which I shall tell you. So Abraham rose early in the morning and saddled his donkey and took him, took two of his young men with him, and Isaac his son. And he split the wood for the burnt offering and, and arose and He arose and went to the place of which God had told him. Then on the third day, uh, Abraham lifted his eyes and saw the place of far off. And Abraham said to his young men, Say, there, say here with donkey, the lad and I will go yonder and worship and and he will come back to you. So Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering and laid it on Isaac his son and he took the fire up in his hand and knife and the two of them went together but Isaac spoke to Abraham his father and said, My father, and he said, Where here I am, my son. And he said, Here I am, my son. Then he said, Look, the fire and the wood, but where is the lamb for a burnt offering? And Abraham said, My son, God will provide for for himself the lamb for a burnt offering so the two of them went together then they came to a place of which God had told him and Abraham build an altar there and place the wood in, in order and he bound Isaac his son and laid him on the altar upon the wood. And Abraham stretched his hand and took the knife to slay his son. But the angel of the Lord called to him from, from heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. So he said, Here I am. And he said, Do not lay your hand on the lad or do anything to him, for now I know that you fear God, since you have not withheld your son, your only son, from me. Then Abraham lifted his eyes and looked there. Behind him was a ram caught on a thicket by its horns. So Abraham went and took the ram and offered it up for a burnt offering and offering instead of his son. And Abraham called the name of the place the Lord will provide as it is said to this day. The mountain of the Lord it shall be provided. Then the angel of the Lord called to Abraham 
the second time out of heaven and said, By myself I have sworn, says the Lord, because you have done this thing and have not withheld your your son, your son, your only son, blessing I will bless you and and multiplying I will multiply your descendants as stars of the heaven and as the sand as the sand which is on the seashore and your descendants shall po possess the gate of the enemies in your seed all the nations of the earth shall be blessed because you have obeyed my voice. So Abraham returned to to his young men. And they rose and went together to Beersheba. And Abraham dwelt at Beersheba. Now it came to pass after these things. That was told Abraham, saying, Indeed, Malachi also has born children. Your brother to your brother Nahor was his firstborn, was his, his brother Kamel, the father of Aram, Chez, Hazer, Padesh. Jeldalaf and Bethuel. And Bethuel begot, begot Re Rebecca. And the eight Malachi, these eight Malachi bore to Nahor, Abraham's brother, his concubine, whose name was. Rem, Remiha also bore Tabeth and Gaham, Tahash and Machaka. Um, this this last section, the last five verses, talked about. The family of Nahor, and and the passage before it was, um, we saw um Abraham's loyalty and um his faith and his trust in God. Um, and there, um, I'm gonna leave a link there. And um, in the in to YouTube video where um Phil Vischer, the creator of VeggieTales, shares his testimony, and he um he talks about the story and explains it in a fun way and pertains it to his personal testimony. Um, like this kind of shows that um. shows us and shows God like what was most important to Abraham like was it the good stuff like the promise of children and having a family or was it just like or was it that he was truly faithful to God um like this was if you've been watching the Judges Bible study, like that's kind of the point of Judges. What Jesus is trying to do is, well, God wants a relationship with us, which means, like in marriage, it says in sickness and in health, which means like, if you are truly friends and truly love love each other, 
I you have to be willing to love people in in bad times just as much as in the good times. And be faithful to them and and we see that Abraham is like that in in what he does here, like we see the strength of his relationship with God here. And and a Christian life, like our walk in our faith, most likely will involve us having to make sacrifices. And being humbled and knowing ourselves for the sake of God and and other and and for the well being of other people. And if we truly love and and if we uh, if we truly love God and love love other people the way God wants us to then we need to be willing to make sacrifices and and deny ourselves like it says the greatest love any person can show is a person laying down his own life for the sake of another. And that's. Jesus did that as example for us. When he took the sins of all of us. And the, the sins of everyone. Who has existed. Will exist. And does exist. All the sins they will ever make. And the punishment for those sins upon himself when he died on the cross so that our sins could be forgiven by, by simply asking God for forgiveness and being truly repentive so that we could once again have a relationship with God and spend eternal life with him. And with that being said, may God be with you, and I will see you next time. Bye.